couldn't in my um, volume. I think with that mic. You can you can have my uh, because I'm 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 a bit loud. Yeah, I'm, I'm loud. I'm, I'm uh, because you you are you are a very you know soft-spoken person, and I am kind of uh, my voice is loud, so I'm pretty sure the mic could catch my voice. So um, so yeah, you were saying that. Uh, Shia Sunni differences are being exploited by Christian evangelists or polemicists and sometimes Shias are falling into seen, the trap. Shias are falling into the trap and they're seen as siding with Christians. So, so what's your actual concern about that? Well, first distinguish between the Christians. Yes. The Christians personally I know mm. are people who stand on a very high moral sort of uh, ground yeah. with their rules and the way they behave and the way yeah. they talk and absolutely. these characters that are coming yeah, here yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are there, are the very, there are very moral Christians out mm. there these are I, like have, I have opposite. met some Christians, they are amazing people they are uh, very upright, very moral uh, so we cannot equate all Christians with what we see here in the park with some of these very unpleasant individuals without but, mentioning names yeah, uh, I mean, we what, can't what say I, all Christians likewise the Muslims we, we have unfortunately we have some characters who are very unpleasant and we can't say all Muslims are like that so of course we have to acknowledge that but uh, mo mostly I think in this park the usual suspects which we can name yeah these are the builders these yeah. are Hey, all these sorts of characters. So yeah. I've talked to even just slightly. They're all different. Them. Everyone, every single one of they them. They have their own different. methodology. But yeah, what yeah. I've noticed is, yeah. they'll bring a point out, mm. and it'll be like a. Who, whose channel is that? MJ London. Sorry. MJ London. MJ. All. All. All love it. Okay. Um, do you mind not filming because I I'm not aware of uh, which channel. channel. Sorry. But I'm not aware of it. So we're gonna have to talk to you and then we can later on. We can, okay. Do apologize for that. Yeah. So I could have provided me to come in because that's my camera I'm using. Okay. I know, but I don't know this channel. This is, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, continue. I'm like, I'm, you know, like sometimes you come to the park. Yeah. It's not really your intention to get into. Uh, Sorry. No, because you're. you're there are two mics there, and you, our voice is not going to be even uh, heard in there. So, so there's no point of filming. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, when you first time come to the park, sometimes it's not about to get into an argument or a debate about yeah. a school of thought, the finer yeah. details of, of yeah. theology. Mm. Sometimes people come with genuine questions, yeah. which they want to either improve on the knowledge, yeah. or just discuss. Yeah. I find you need to discuss. Sometimes with the questions asked, mm. it improves your breadth of knowledge as well. Yes. As you learn how to answer them, how yes. to deal with those questions. Yes. Or even yes. research them. Yes. So with the Christians here, mm. I, mean, I made the mistake of assuming that you can talk to them about something with the view of increasing knowledge or things yeah. like that. Yeah. What they tend to do is drag it into certain fixed topics. Yeah. They'd be like, what do you think of Jizya? Or the prophet kills someone. They'll just drag it into something like this. Some something controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Ignoring, you know, I mean, I could be there to ask Ig him about ignoring anything. Ignoring ninety-five else, you know? percent of Islam, and they will pick on one percent or something, something very difficult for people to to fathom in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. Or even yeah. even yeah. The, the the questions which sometimes require a book to answer, not one line. Exactly. Of exactly. You, know you can't saying? really deal with the topic. Uh, of that magnitude in a in, in a small discussion. Yes, absolutely, yeah. and they will do that. Yeah, that's that's the issue. I mean, that, when I first came, yeah, even when I talked to you last time, yeah, that was um, <laughs> sort of not my intention. It's more like just to talk and see if any mutual points and we can get like sort of um, uh, learn from each other about things. I mean, most Shia Sunni talks tend to just focus into the Imama side, and then it becomes a yeah. so sort of argumentative. It's, it's a few things. Uh, yeah. Between Shias and Sunnis, there are many differences. I believe almost everything is different. I personally believe. Okay, although um, people don't like to think so, uh, but that is the case. Almost every single thing we believe in is, is different. You know, our belief in God is very different. Okay, um, our belief in prophethood is different. Our belief in uh, 
you know, in Aqidah, for example, other beliefs, we have uh, huge differences and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. If the Shias want to believe in certain things and they insist in believing in those things, then it's their life. If they want to believe in those things, let them believe in those things. Likewise, the Sunnis, but we must acknowledge differences. We must be honest about our differences. We cannot pretend as if there are no differences. When we discuss our differences openly, honestly, we can come closer. Our youth, our youngsters, our people, our audiences, you know, our crowds out there, they can get an honest discussion on matters we disagree on. This is exactly what I try to achieve here in the park. Instead of having hostile, mudslinging matches, my purpose here is to educate the masses, uh, Shias and Sunnis, so that they can actually see clearly, you know, where the differences are. And then both sides can share the evidences and people can choose what they want to be. So just something we touched on earlier, um, mm. to clarify, mm. uh, I noticed myself that the Shia Sunni division mm. is exploited by fundamentalist Christians now. Uh, in that they tend to use that to split the, the public's opinion up between the two. Sometimes they'll seem to side with one group and then behind the back they'll say, look at these, they're divided between them, they don't know which narration is correct, which Imam or I, saying is correct. After I'll tell you something, I, think, I don't think Christian evangelists are actually concerned about Shiaism because they know Shiaism is a minority within the body of Islam. Okay, and um, they're not really concerned about that. If you look at most Christian evangelists, they are mainly attacking the Sunni position, mm. right? They use Bukhari, they use the Quran, um, they use other Sunni books to attack the Sunni position. I have hardly seen any Christian evangelist spending time on uh, criticizing Shiaism, and in the end, the response is, hold on, we don't even believe in that. Okay. Yeah, one thing they have used repeatedly, which is a very uh, prominent Shia concept, which is being thrown at Sunnis repeatedly, and that is taqiyya. A lot of Christian missionaries, evangelists, pro propagandists, Islamophobes, almost Islamophobes, are using this slur, this this um, this idea that when we when we are trying to be nice about our faith, we are doing taqiyya. And we tell them, we the Sunnis, who are the majority, the overwhelming majority of the Muslim world, we don't believe in taqiyya as the Shias do. Because so what do you understand taqiyya? I mean, taqiyya is as far as I... Dis dissemination. As far as, so dissemination, dis dissemination. As far as I understand it, the, the rule of it is when the Quran says, when God says, if you are under threat of death, something like this, you can conceal your faith. As long as in private, you maintain faith in your heart. Yeah? No, that's... This is taqiyya. That's... Yeah, that's not taqiyya. We actually don't call it taqiyya. What that is, is basically, if your life is threatened, yeah. there's a sword on your head and there's a gun pointing to your head, and you are being forced to denounce your faith, and if in, that, in, if in those circumstances you denounce your faith, then there is no blame against you because you have been forced into denouncing your faith. So anything done forcefully has no weight and any in, a, in, in any civilized society that's acceptable, right? Yeah. That's not taqiyya. So which taqiyya is? Taqiyya, the Shia version, as I understand it, and, 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 and I will request that we don't we spend too much time delving into it because then eventually uh, two hours, three hours down the line we're going to we're going to end up agreeing because when I put the evidence in front of you, you will see uh, what I'm saying is correct. Uh, taqiyya, as I understand it, is simply hiding your faith from others, not completely... Um, so the reason is not your fear of death, but just yeah, for others? It's just, just, it, 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 has, it has nothing to do with the fear of death. Yeah. Of course, the doctrine was formed when there was fear, no doubt. The doctrine was formed during the Abbasid period when some Shias were being persecuted and this doctrine was formed to hide Shia beliefs from the masses because some of the Shia beliefs are highly disturbing. Quran has been corrupted. Quran has been changed. This belief was very... It is heavy to this day on Shias. Shia youngsters who hear this belief out there, they can't, they can't fathom it, but it's there in the classical books. 
Major Shia authorities believed in this and some of them do to this day. But they don't like to talk about it on the member because they know the audiences, uh, people watching their discussions or their, their speeches um, cannot handle it. Okay, but here, so, here in the park. So that's the key. Like here in the park, if I, I'm talking to you, yeah? Yeah. I introduce myself as a Shia to start with. Yes. And I don't hide it in my face. So yeah. I'm not doing Takiya. Okay, you're not doing Takiya. Yeah. Uh, but are you aware as to your obligations when it comes to Takiya? No, no. This is another discussion. Yeah. Let's Maybe you're not aware of the doctor. No, no. Let's say someone is following Islam. Yes. And that they call, I, might so, call, so, I might call myself a Shia. Mm. It doesn't mean I've done like research into the books sure, to that sure. extent. So you happen to be Shia yeah. by... By your, well, by, by, your can, by birth, I can tell you yeah. that um, the background, my background, uh, is mainly the first thing I done was read the translation of the Quran when I was 13, and Shia influence came in when I was about 20, and then after that, it's mostly just you know when you go to mosques and hear the, the Alim talk. That that's my training. I haven't looked into formal books. You see, anything. let me very quickly Shia clarify why we're talking about Taqiyya so that people are not confused. We are only talking about Taqiyya. Uh, to highlight the point that Christian missionaries, some of them, and some Islamophobes out there, are using this idea to attack Islam and Muslims. They're saying, oh, these Muslims will never speak the truth. They, they have this doctrine of taqiyya. They will never speak the truth. This is what these Islamophobes claim out there. And it is a lie. It is an outright lie against the Muslims, at least the majority, okay? Over 90%. Taqiyya is a Shia doctrine. And Shias are a minority in the body of Islam. The Sunnis do not do taqiyya. In fact, we have this belief that speaking the truth is the best of struggles. There's a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, who said, Afdalul jihad, kalimatu haqq, inda sultan in jair. The best of struggles is to speak the truth in front of a tyrannical ruler when your life is threatened. This yeah. is the doctrine we believe in yeah. as the Sunnis. That speaking the truth even when your life is threatened is the highest virtue in Islam. So how can we, we how can we believe in taqiyya? So it's a Shia doctrine which is being thrown at the Sunnis, unfortunately. Um, and Shias think, need to come out. Shias you, need to come out clearly. Me, if you give yeah. me a second, I don't yeah. think that's quite right. Okay. The Christians, when they bring in something um, controversial, mm. like it could be something about the Prophet's character, yeah, it could be something about history, yeah what they find mm. and what i also see in the discussions is that often there will be a narration there will be the seal of the narration in yeah. the sunni books yeah. which will differ to the defense that a sunni places in front of them in other words they will deny the authenticity of certain narrations when it seems to go against the character of the prophet and the Sunnis? Yeah, they okay. will deny. They'll say, Give me an oh, example. There's, there's a weakness in the chain. Give me an example. Oh, we could bring something in. We, we cannot there, there's make... There's an example... You know, we cannot make things up. There's an example where... Um, I've seen anyone. Yeah. Where they'll often bring in this example. The Prophet was suicidal, had suicidal thoughts. And they'll quote these narrations from your books. And the reaction will be either to deny it happened, or to say that that's a weak narration. No. Specifically about the narration if of it's, it's, suicidal if, thoughts. If it's from Bukhari... Yeah or Muslim or one of our authentic sources and our scholars have authenticated these reports we cannot deny them this we is, don't deny them this is the question if there's something in let's say Bihari when you say our scholars have authenticated does that mean there's something in there which has not been authenticated or declined no 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 yeah. Bukh it's when all I, been authenticated yeah, Bukh from cover to cover yes please yes uh, Bukhari in its entirety all the reports with chains that's a very important caveat okay with chains are authentic so there's some day with which don't have chains so yes yeah. some of the aqwal some of the sayings some of the some of the complementary information yeah. is without chains that information needs to be assessed okay and it has been assessed some of it is weak okay so when we say bukhari we are talking about reports with chains Okay. So okay. So that other suicidal things, one, just latching onto that one. Yeah. Yeah. What is your opinion on that one? I have to. Ch I'm. I'm pretty sure it's in Bukhari. Uh, because the I'm premise is, if yeah. a prophet is I, I'm pretty sure it's in Bukhari. The, the as premise, far as I remember, it's in Bukhari. Hold on a second. The yeah. premise of that, the Christians use, yeah. is that if a man is suicidal, 
mm. if it's mentally unstable mm. and that's a profit okay to them that doesn't add up so christians have no leg to stand uh, legs to stand on no this criticize. is between muslims yeah no no no, no. between okay, okay if the shias are criticizing us for that no no, no. yeah my, my meaning is not that my meaning yeah. is if it's in the book yeah. and as you've just stated we will stand by it you're happy until with, the day of judgment happy yes. with the authenticity i am telling you again we everything that has been authenticated by our scholars and there is an overwhelming uh, majority of scholars in agreement on that particular report and the authenticity of it i will never shy away from it you will never see me and people like myself and some of our scholars who stand behind us they will never shy away from any of these concepts we will defend these concept, concepts concepts until the day of judgment how do you defend it then someone presents the argument that is not it doesn't know he's a prophet he doesn't know he's a prophet he doesn't know what's happening with him the B B B bukhari states clearly he was in a state of shock he ran to his wife khadija zammiluni zammiluni laqad khashitu ala nafsi cover me cover me uh, i i'm i i'm fearful about my life this is exactly what happened we defend it but the report is authentic the prophet said it and what's wrong with it is it no uh, uh, call it suicide he, he was he was in a state of confusion in a state of shock that Adnan uh, says he agrees that. he agrees it but yeah. remember we, last week we spoke to a few selfie brothers yeah they disagreed on that there's a lot that they disagreed. say they no, said we don't, they got, no. They, what they, they okay said, until i see, until i see the report and it's wording no, no, i cannot what, comment what, on what it what they said they said yeah. that uh, they said that we, say, we can disagree on okay Adnan's i need to see the report to, the suicide uh, incident, they said that word itself is weak. So to say that word is weak in there, that's like me going to court. No, no, no. And if, if there's something that's false in there, that means the whole testimony is weak. Okay, wait. Correct, correct or not? Correct wait. Or not? Let's assume for a second that the, the, the report is authentic. I will stand by this word. I will not shy away from it. Okay, what, what if he was suicidal? What? Okay, he is not a prophet. He. Uh, he he's doesn't not, know he's a prophet. No, no, according to you, according to no, you. No, 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 no. According, according, to, according to us, of course. No, 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 but not to yourself when you say, because we spoke to I'm you. saying until 40, he had no idea he was yeah, a prophet. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, do you but believe brother, otherwise? Brother, no, I spoke yeah. to another Sunni brother. Yeah. His beliefs are completely different to yours. The same according to yourself. If you say yourself, talk to that's, me. that's fine to yourself. Yeah. It's best to but talk to me. Sunni yeah, well. He was a prophet. In fact, we don't even <laughs> Look, you're going to say, if you're going to tell me Tom said this, no, 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 no. Uh, Harry said this, or Dick said this, no, no, we're okay. about Tom Dick. or we're George talking, said this. We're talking about Sun Sunni brothers here, which I spoke to. Sunni brothers, park, what does that in, mean? In the park last week, Nodja brother, he said, we don't even Again, it means nothing. Okay, I will stand for my words and my, brother, my brother, views, brother, right? Brother, is that brother, fair? Which is fair. Yeah. Can I just yeah. say, we don't even need to go to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He said Prophet Abraham was a prophet from right at the beginning. So if Prophet Abraham was a prophet from right at the beginning, why is it a problem that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi cannot be a prophet from right from the beginning? If Hazrat Isa Ali Islam was a prophet from right from the beginning, when he's telling the Christians he's a prophet, why is it that our beloved prophet, the greatest man to walk on the earth, cannot be a prophet from right from the beginning? But in fact, according to your school, or sorry, according to basically, according to you, he's a prophet, from the age of 40, suddenly he becomes a, a prophet. Yes. So the prophet Salah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to make a prophet at the age of 40. Okay. But then there's other schools of thought, you know, where there's our school of thought, with, even within your own school of thought. Let me, let me throw it back. Within your own school of thought, that differs to what let, you say. Let me, let me so basically, there is an agreement. On okay, let me so throw it. you say what you're saying, that's... I got your point. Yeah. That if Ibrahim can, uh, sorry, if uh, if Isa al-Islam could be a prophet by birth, why can Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not be a prophet by birth? Okay? Correct. Yeah. We believe Allah knew he was a prophet by birth. Hold on, I'll go further. You don't understand our view. Let me explain our view. Okay? And I'll show you how it's a problem with the Shias. This attack. When the Shias launched this attack okay, against it's the, the Shias. Shia. It's with the Sunnis as well. All right, let's because talk about the Shias. Lots, there's lots of Sunnis okay. that disagree that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam basically was a prophet. I, I'm, I, let's talk you're about Shias and Sunnis. You're, you're a Shia, I'm a Sunni. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Forget about the Sunnis. Yeah. Sunnis, <laughs> there are too many Sunnis no, in the but, world. No, but what with different views. Not, not, you make it out basically, it's just that Shias believe that. In fact, it's the Sunnis that believe that as well. But we're actually drifting away from the, the question. The question was about the suicide. No, that, no the you, 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 you raised the question, let me just answer it. You said obviously that's a the, Allah knew that Muhammad وسلم, is going to be a prophet. Yeah, when, before he was born. 30 centuries before the prophet is born, Allah foretold his coming in the Bible. Allah refers to that in the Quran. 
يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل. It was in the knowledge of Allah. Now, 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 now wait. Was it in the knowledge of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he will be a prophet? Yes, he was. That he knew. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Because okay. even Jabir bin Abdullah Ansari asked him, "When were you a prophet?" Okay. He said, "I was a prophet before okay. even Adam okay. Islam was created." Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, to wait, Andalusia, wait, wait. And the Sunnis also what? agree with that. Okay. Do the prophets have to pray? Do the prophets have to pray? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. You're struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Come, come. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. You took took a while yeah, yeah. to answer yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, course, okay. If the prophets have to pray, if he knows he's a prophet, he has to pray. Was he praying salah before? He was 14. Oh, when? when he was Until. Salah, Salah, yeah. Wait, was he praying Salah before he became a prophet? The no, order for Salah he hadn't come by. No, 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 no. No, no, how, what do you mean? He, he knows he's a prophet of God. No, no, no. That means he has to pray. The orders for Salah weren't there. In, in the case of Jesus, in, read, read about the... Wait, 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 you're going on a tangent. Let's stick to the topic. Let's just say something. You can carry on. You just said in the Bible, which we all agree, that uh, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Bible. In Bukhari? Yeah, and in the no Bible. No Sunni. You, you're wrong about the Sunnis. I mean, I got over the Sunnis, Sunnis, I don't know Sunnis, what Sunnis you're, you're talking Bible, about. You're talking about the because it's in Bukhari. All the Sunnis. Wait, let me finish quickly. All the Sunnis are unanimous on the Bukhari. Whether these are Sufis or non Sufis or Salafis or Deobandis or the Barelis, whatever Sunnis they are, whatever type they are, they all accept Bukhari as the most authentic book after the Quran. Let me finish. In Bukhari, there is a report when the angel appeared to the Prophet in the cave, he ran to his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, and it is in Kitab al-Wahi, one of the first reports in Sahih al-Bukhari. He ran to his wife saying, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, lakad khashitu ala nafsi. Okay, it doesn't stop there. He says, cover me, cover me, I fear for my life. If he knows he's a Prophet of God, Already, if he knows, if he has that knowledge, why is he doing this? Number one, then it doesn't stop there. Khadija tells him, she comforts him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Allah will never harm you. Why? Because you are such and such. You are a good person. You help the needy. You are kind to your guests. You stand with the truth. Then she takes him to Waraka bin Nofal. Waraka bin Nawfal tells him, Hazan Namus, he tells him, not that he knows already, Hazan Namus alladhi nazzalallahu ala Musa. This is the same angel or same spirit that descended upon Moses. Okay. Ya laytani an akuna hayyan iz yukhrijuka qawmuka. I wish I will be alive on the day when your people drive you out. Awa mukhrijiyahum. Rasulullah is shocked. Waraka tells him, I wish I will be alive and they will drive you out. And he our Mukhriji, if he knows he's a prophet and if he knows what's coming ahead, why is he shocked? Why is he saying, our Mukhriji, so those so called Sunnis you're talking about, they are either Jahil or they're not Sunnis. Period. They don't know what they're talking about and I don't think they exist. They don't know what's in their books. I'm telling you, we have been categorically told in the Quran and the Sunnah that the Prophet. Did not have the knowledge of his Nabuwa until it was revealed to him. Okay, that's why he was not praying before Nabuwa. He was not doing Salah. Salah was made obligatory in the year 10. Okay, before that they were praying, praying two prayers. You know about that, yes? And it was not obligatory the, uh, till then. So what's what's happening here? So there is there are a lot of nuances. We can open can of worms and we can go on and on and on. Coming to suicide very quickly so that we save time and we have a fruitful discussion. Hijaz Bhai, right? Yeah, yeah, Hijaz Bhai is listening quietly. I, 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 li I like that. And I want you to come in as well. With suicide, what's the problem? The man doesn't know. He doesn't know what happened to him in the cave. Okay? And he doesn't understand the experience. He runs to his wife in a state of shock. Okay, and then he doesn't know what's happening to him. This is a I mean, imagine being in a state like that. You are in a cave alone. Suddenly you get a vision or someone appears to him, appears to you and says, Iqra bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq. It is shocking. Anyone would be shocked. Frightened. So, frightened, frightened, frightened. absolutely. He was frightened. 
we are told in our sources he was extremely frightened so that's natural reaction to expect anything else from him is uh, is expecting uh, abnormality he wasn't he wasn't abnormal he was a normal man who was frightened so this is our response and we have no problem with that now for some reason she has can't get around that for no, some reason to you, no, yeah. because like i said we spoke to no 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 selfies. i just gave you references no no no, no, no. Few, yes. no you get the reference but there's, Bukhari. there's a few selfies in the park here that i put this Again, question forward to they are either not okay, okay. sunnis okay. or they're jahil okay, they claim to be selfies anyway few of them are bring bring them to me let them talk to me until we do that let's let's not waste time they said that word the suicide they go that is fabricated this that's weak we don't okay. we don't accept as I, okay. as i said as yeah. i said as i said yeah. i have to look at the report yeah. in order to comment on it yeah. so but let's assume it is there and it is authentic what's yeah. the problem he's a, he's a, he's a human no, no, no. he's a human terrified. and but, but, he are terrified in a state of shock to, according to us we don't accept it but according to the salafis the other salafis in, in, like you keep saying everyone agrees on it because it's a lie i i am still they, defending they, the concept they, they even before so yes. there's a problem there if you got your own salafi brothers that uh, that disagree that say we don't accept that then obviously uh, they say that, that okay they that must have grounds they, they must that have that word okay is brother weak. you're not listening they, they must have listening. grounds yeah. bring so the you, report you to me you say they're not bring bring the no 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 you're saying they're giant i am I, can claim I, the giant. I am i'm saying if there are they are saying yeah. that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had knowledge of nabuwa yeah. before it was given to him Yeah wait. No wait. we're talking about the Wait no you ma you you mentioned no, the Sunni Sunni and I said those Sunnis are either jahil or they're yeah. not Sunni. Yeah but no we're talking about Because the, it's in Bukhari. We're talking about the suicide I gave the suicide word in. Suicide yeah. word which you said is authentic. No I'm not saying it's authentic. It's I I I it's said it five authentic. times already okay, yeah, sorry. until you bring the report I cannot comment on it. But assuming that it is authentic. Assuming it's authentic. Okay. I still defend it. I I don't know the report is talking about. So until you bring the report in Arabic Anyway, uh, yeah, I so mean, so coming back to our discussion. What I was trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Was, so so you know so when you you know when you, I think we should come back to our original discussion. discussion the Christians throwing Shia concepts us at us to have a dig at us. No, no, they they, they tell was, us that we do taqiyya no, 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 no. while it's a Shia doctrine. That wasn't discussion. Yeah. This has same thing happened last week. Yeah. If I told you my intention is never to argue about the Shia Sunni differences in public, I don't believe it's the wrong thing to do. No, 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 uh, we, no, no. Look, we live in an open world now. In Everything a, is on YouTube. In a twisted way. Now. Yeah, but we can, we can, we can untwist it by having decent discussions like this. Give me a minute, Bro brothers. Don't, don't, don't start another debate there. Yes. Give me a minute. The suicide thing I raised, yeah, because mm. there's a flip side to that coin. Now, someone who's not familiar with. Uh, had these generations all this let's say someone just come in from the outside it depends who's talking to us yeah let's say someone because has, because let's let's take the shia example yeah, you know you're, you're going off on yeah, a yeah and wait the mix play that someone from the outside might well question why would a prophet be suicidal okay to me and you yeah my opinion's better from the brothers Uh, I don't have an issue explaining it in the way you've explained it. Right. If an angel came yeah. for the first time and yeah. you haven't seen it, listen, guys, no listen. doubt you would. Sorry, you know, sorry. guys, listen. Do apologize. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt you well, might. Unless if you want to talk, please, uh, because we get disturbed, brothers. We get disturbed by your discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So that in itself is not the issue. That whether a man feels suicidal if an angel suddenly appears, to him, that's an understandable thing. It's not an issue. As you say, if a man's not a prophet. is not aware of those things at the time yes and that would be a frightening experience for the yes. angels are described as fright frightening creatures for someone who hasn't seen them. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no 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 sugar did you push sugar no, sugar thank you thank you thanks so much in fact Quran even testifies when Abraham saw the angels he, he got a fear of them the ones who want eating okay it says those words specifically he he got a fear of them a suspicion of them so they can even in human form cause fear yes in corporeal no no no, no. i don't want to cause in corporeal No one's offering me any. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I was joking. You want, you want to take a piece? Actually, you, I was, right, when he was asking for tea, I got something um, in there. You want to share the tea with me? No, no, but I, I don't mind sharing. Just hot chocolate. Okay. okay. So even in, in human form, they can cause fear. In corporeal form, they can cause terrifying fear. You're right. So it's not an issue. The issue is how the Christians exploit it. Now they present it as why would a prophet? 
become suicidal. The, the implication is that he's a mentally... You see, with, with, Christians, you know, with Christians, we have a number of ways of responding to these uh, things that they try to use in vain. They have tried it for a very long time and we keep responding to them by giving them examples from the Bible that if you have one problem with Muhammad wasallam, we will show you ten bigger problems in the Bible. They cannot run away and they, they cannot... This, they they have cannot have this, they hold on, cannot, so, yeah. trouble. they have this new trick. Yeah. That whenever you quote something from the Bible, they say that's not our covenant, we've got covenant with Jesus. Fine. This no, no, they can't, they can't escape. Yeah. This is why we, we have to be fair with them. We show them 2 Timothy 3.16. Which is part of uh, it's a it's an epistle of Paul, Second Timothy, and in chapter three, verse sixteen, it clearly states Paul stated all Scripture is God breathed, it's good for correction, teaching, and uh, in uh, in righteousness. Okay, so all Scripture means. Definitely the Old Testament, if not the New Testament, because the New Testament doesn't exist when Paul is writing. It doesn't exist. New Testament accumulated in the first and second, uh, actually third century when it, it was put together in the current form we have. Okay, otherwise it was all scattered. The New Testament does not exist. Yeah, Paul is time. talking about the Old Testament. Essentially so it, the Old Testament. Is it fair to say any moral ruling derived from the Old Testament? Absolutely valid. Is valid for all for the poor Christians. For all Christians. They cannot escape from this. They cannot escape from this. Therefore, we take them to the Old Testament and show them severe examples of worse, I mean, if, if they want to call it bad, yeah, mm. worse behavior, right? Here, we're saying a prophet of God who had no idea what's happening to him, okay, was in a state of shock. Okay, and he runs to his wife, okay, and he's he's saying, cover me, because I don't know what happened to me. So we have ways to respond to Christians. That, that cover what, me, what really hurts me is me when they this, use me get, Christian doctrines. Let me get this in. Sorry. The yeah. cover me concept, is this the one that the Quran says, oh, you who are covered up, arise Muzammin. and warn? Yes. Ya ayyuhal muzammil. Because that comes from that Yes, word. yes, yes. So the Prophet did cover him himself up at yes, some yes, point. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. As, absolutely. So Bukhari is in correlation with the Quran there. Mm. When uh, the words in Bukhari are used, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, Lakat Khashidu ala nafsi. I, I fear for my life. Yeah. Okay. So it's very consistent. We have a very consistent system to explain these things. And um, we don't uh, apologize, for, apologize for them. We're not apologetic. We're very confident and proud about those doctrines. Yeah. And, and Alhamdulillah, we're very satisfied with our responses. But you see the conflict. And there are many more responses we can give. You see the conflict with my brother is yeah. that in the Shia um, explanation of things, a certain perfection is implied from birth, mm. which as you're saying, it's conflicting with the reports that history has shown. Yeah. So, like for example... You mean said, perfectionism in prophets and, and the imams? Well, I think the way you said it, that if the prophet was a prophet from birth, yeah. why was he asking these questions, which yeah. imply that he didn't know? For example, yeah. an angel. Yeah. A prophet should be familiar who an angel is or not. So... My response to that is the yeah. Shias have a big problem at hand. Similar to what we do to Christians, we take the Shias to their sources and show them you have far bigger problems to worry about than this. Okay, are you aware that one of the Imams appointed his son as his successor in his life? And Imams are Masum, right? And what they say that is... That's what you mean by Masum. Okay, well, no, no, okay, let's not go into that. We can go into that if you want, but it's going to be a lengthy discussion. But the Shia understanding of Imams is that what they say is infallible. It is effectively revelation. What, it, what the Imams say is effectively revelation from God. Okay. So they can't say the wrong thing? No, Imams cannot say wrong. Yeah. Imams cannot say wrong. Okay. And if Imam has already said, after me, my son will succeed me. Yeah. And that son dies. And this happened with one of the Imams. Do you know which Imam? Which one? Imam Jafar Sadiq or Musa Kazim, sorry, Musa Kazim. Uh, Imam Musa Kazim because uh, Ismail, Ismail died. Okay? Uh, let me confirm this. Ismaili Shia thing. Yeah, this is where Ismaili Shias came about, right? Mm. Uh, the, the elder son, the elder son died who had been appointed by the Imam in his life. 
I am pretty sure it's about his smile. Okay, I have to go and confirm. I read it the other day. I completely stuck. I can't believe I. Okay, so and the Imam simply <laughs> was shocked. What happened there? Mm. If the Imam has already appointed him as a successor, yeah. and the son dies, and now the younger son has to be the Imam, there is a problem. This is why some of the Shias came up with this concept called Bada. God basically changed his mind. Allah can change his mind. This is where the concept of changing the mind of God came in. And this is where we actually disagree with the Shias heavily. Uh, that even on Tawheed, we differ with the Shias. Even on Tawheed. If the Shias, those Shias who believe in this concept of Bada, go and check it. Don't believe me. Don't believe so you go and check. Bada implying that God, implying that God change changed his mind. He changed his mind. Or forgets or what? No, no, changed his mind simply. Change it. It, the son died. The yeah. son died and now, okay, the new uh, successor or the new candidate has come forward. Okay? Are you saying God can't change his mind? I am saying once God announces something, mm. okay, he simply, you know, um, cannot cancel that once he has announced it that this is how it's going to be okay if you don't have when it comes to, when it comes to I, mean, I, I know the concept of nasq okay i know the, the nasq abrogation doesn't work here that's why the shias had to come up with the concept of bada no, the god had to be fair the first time i've heard it like yeah, i said to you, I'm check not, it the I'm concept of bada god changing his mind in shiaism uh, i was just running that as a hypothetical let's say god um announces I'm going to make so and so into a leader or an imam or a prophet. For example, Tabbad Yada Bil Habim Watab. Ma Agna Anhu Maluhu Ma Kasab. That, in other words, Abu Lahab is doomed. Yeah. Yes? And Abu Lahab becomes a Muslim. You see the point? You see the point? God has condemned him in the Quran. Allah has condemned him in the Quran. And we use the same logic with the Shias about the Sahaba. The Sahaba under the three, God is saying, Allah is saying, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَاعِيُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرِ yeah. Allah is pleased with the believers who have given you bay'ah under the tree. Yeah. Over a thousand companions, 1,400 almost, right? عَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ And God knows what's in their hearts. It doesn't stop there. It gets worse for the Shias, according to the Quran. That Allah knows what's in their hearts, those who gave bay'ah. Allah is, yeah. but the Shias, how they come back is, to be fair, they say, it says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So those who were believers, because they were hypocrites there, right? We don't, we don't, ex we don't, you no, know, but understand it like can that. Can I give you my, but, yeah, my yeah, understanding of this? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because it's an interesting point. If God says, I'm pleased with someone. Yeah. Um, at that point in time, let's say for example, we can give the example of Iblis. There was a point in time where due to his worship and good conduct, he was elevated and his, his, his companions were the angels and even God's voice, he was uh, honored enough to hear God's voice directly, converse with God directly. Um, one assumes, therefore... Are you sure you don't want to hear the TV? No, I just full of what talking. One assumes, therefore, that God was pleased with him at that point. But when he violated a command of God, which God... He became regime. Yeah. Very good point. So, one could argue, yeah. hypothetically, yeah. that there was a time where God was pleased with him. If, some, yeah. if the angels asked God, are you pleased with the bliss? Yeah. He would have said, yes, for sure. He, a thousand years of God no in the bars. No, it's hypothetical. If at that point someone, let's say, asked, it's hypothetical, I'm not saying God said this or it's in a narration, but because he was elevated to that position, he was yeah. amongst them, one would assume God is pleased with him at that yeah. time. Yeah. But then God has certain of his commands, which sure. if you violate them, and the wording is, is in the Quran, he says, I make all the previous deeds of no effect. He says, and this is easy for me, this is okay. a Quran verse. Okay. So, all previous deeds are of no effect. Even the thousand rakat the yeah, yeah, whatever Iblis yeah, yeah. had done. But dis disobedience caused the them moment, to be disobedient. Yeah, the yeah. moment he yeah. disobeyed that particular yeah. command, which yeah. was make obeisance to Adam. Yes. Yes. So we learn from this that certain commands have the effect. If you break them, yeah. 
God has certain rules like where commands you can break and there's forgiveness for yeah, them yeah. and yeah. then you can go back to them. Yeah. But there's certain commands which open a one way... It, this logic doesn't apply to... Let me, let me, let me yeah. just finish. Yeah. They open a one way door here for God says not only is his previous deeds of no effect mm. but such is the gravity of this disobedience that God says he also will go to hell. This is also announced. There's no way out for him. There's no repentance for this particular thing he's done. Yeah. So the command of not making obeisance, yeah. in this case, is a one-way ticket to hell. Yeah. And everything he done in the past is dismissed. So if under a tree, men give their word to a prophet, that's fine. I'm not questioning. I have no doubt that, that 1,400 did. Yeah. I have no doubt that these were men whose faith was real. Hmm. I don't call them hypocrites. At that time, it's real. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 don't, sure. I don't call them hypocrites. I'm trying okay. to get out of it like that. Okay. Because God isn't that harsh. At that time, he wasn't harsh with the believers anyway. This was a new religion. Mm. He wasn't going to condemn us for small faults. In fact, yeah. he forgave many things. Sure. People ran from away from battlefield, he forgave that. Mm. People wavered, he forgave that as well. Mm. Because this was the beginning of Islam. Yeah. And now at that tree, God can say, I am pleased with the people. Because they have given allegiance to the, to the Prophet. Mm. This is God's order. Sure. But if afterwards, similar to our friend Iblis, if afterwards... Our friend? <laughs> I'm sure you didn't mean you to You know what that. I mean, you know what I mean. I, I'm a bad friend. <laughs> Not okay. friend at all. Our enemy Iblis. Uh, because Allah says, yeah. innahu adu, uh, uh, he's you know... An enemy yeah, yeah, he's an enemy to you and your father. Yeah. Yeah. As, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah of course. But our bad friend Iblis, our enemy. Not even friend, don't call him friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's often friends that can be Our enemy. Often friends that in betray. Lakum adu mubin. The Quran says yeah, he is an open enemy. Like to open yeah, yeah. So, like Iblis learned the hard way that you can have a station with the angels and then you can fall from grace. You can converse with God. Mm -hmm. But that's such a is the disaster that's of disobeying point. certain commands that God says. That's a very good yeah. point you made, and it's a valid point, and I accept it wholeheartedly. But it doesn't work here with the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. Why? Let me explain. A number of reasons. Number one. But remember, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I haven't said, I haven't condemned the Sahaba. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not, but in, you're so. giving the reasons as to why some Shias would argue that that's the way. Let me say it then. Yeah, yeah. If, for example, God commanded yeah. that this is an Imam over you now, like Iblis was told, this is now yeah. for you to bow down to. Yeah. So if we were commanded, this is an Imam by name. And someone who was pleasant in that pledging yeah. says, I, dis I disagree with this person yeah. being the Imam. Mm. Under those conditions, yeah. I believe mm. that it's similar to the non-bowing down by Satan mm. in the sense that it, all the previous deeds are of no effect. Now, okay. can... let me quickly explain. Yeah. In this verse, when Allah says, لَقَدْ, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ okay? We believe that when Allah expresses rida, Allah knows the future, of course. Yeah. yeah. When Allah specifically expresses rida, his pleasure with someone, that means that Allah is pleased with them. Okay. And Allah will remain pleased with them. Ah. Because, because, because if the extension they... you have to justify. Sorry? He is pleased with them, that's fine. We're yeah. not arguing with that. Yeah, yeah. Why would you say it goes on to eternity? In the because majority. someone there might become, let's say for example, yeah. if that person afterwards became a criminal or murdered, something like this. Yeah. There were cases, people of Badr, whom Allah was pleased with, again, 300, over, a 300, over 300 companions, some say 313, um, Allah was pleased with them. Some of them did commit crimes. Okay? And this argument was used that they have been forgiven. Allah is pleased with them. This is this was the understanding of the Prophet and his companions. For example, do you accept that? Yes, the Prophet the Prophet accepted it. Okay, when you know, but no one is when you know Hatib, Hatib, you know Hatib, you know the story of Hatib. No, no, I mean the justice of Allah. No, I'm that telling you what the Prophet did. Evil, what the Prophet? I'm telling you what the Prophet did. Yeah. I'm telling you what the Prophet did. Someone committed a grave crime from the companions. You know grave. Crime? I'm gonna. Yeah, of yeah. course. The, gra the gravest crime one can commit, almost treason, against the prophet. And the prophet forgave him. Why? Why? Do you know why? The prophet can forgive. In no, 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 no. Why? Prophet, he gave a reason. He gave a reason. He gave a reason. Yeah. Let me explain very quickly. Hatib 
Ibn Abi Balta. He had sent a letter to the Qurayshis when the Prophet was planning to attack Quraysh. Like a warning in advance. That they're coming. Yeah. And he revealed the secret of the Prophet to them. And when the letter was found, the Prophet وسلم, by Wahi was told that the letter has been sent catch yeah. uh, the messenger. And the messenger was caught by Ali bin Abi Talib out of all people. He brought the letter back. The letter was read. And the Prophet said, Hatib, what is this? And Umar, who was present at the time, he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to cut this munafiq's head off, this hypocrite's hypocrite. Why? Why hypocrite? He is informing our enemies. Yeah, the that we're, yeah. So this is hypocrisy. To Umar, it was hypocrisy. The Prophet stopped him. In any other circumstances, it would have been an act of hypocrisy and treason. The Prophet stopped him. Umar, he cannot be a munafiq. Why? He was in Badr. He was in Badr. He's from the companions of Badr. Clearly. Okay. So, so what why saved him? Why what did, then Prophet why did asked he him. Sell out the, okay, no, this yeah, is this one. The, then the Prophet asked him. So before the explanation, before he gave his explanation, the Prophet already said, hold on, he cannot be a munafiq. Hold on, hold on. So then Prophet asked him to explain. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have my family there. And I know you are a prophet of Allah and I believe that and you know I believe that okay I know Allah will help you you will be victorious against the Qureshis I know that I only inform the Qureshis so that they don't harm my family and I want you to inform them and the Prophet Sallallahu said accepted explanation accepted but doesn't that violate okay. a Quran's verse no it doesn't it doesn't says, uh, if you hold your, we believe prophet understood the Quran if you hold your family or your near ones more dear to you than God and his prophet it, it did not then you're not he did not us. hold them more dear but he just he said, did not he said no, no, I want no, no, to no, no. my family he said I was certain of your victory I didn't want my family to be harmed in this conflict therefore I informed the Qureshis because they will think that I have done them a favor but even the Qureshis had this concept of marua marua is courtesy that they would yeah. out of courtesy they will not harm my family i knew you will win ya rasulullah so the prophet accepted the explanation okay here we get an idea the idea is when allah has declared that this bunch of people is forgiven it's forgiven once forgiven by allah that means Yo. once condemned by allah condemned okay abu lahab okay once forgiven by allah forgiven that's a general rule in the quran that's a general rule in you're the Quran. Saying yeah. That okay. You're so, saying so, no, that let me give, give you the uh, very one second. Thing. Whoever was at that pledge um, under the tree, yeah. Hudaybiyah. Or even let's not go into specifics because people will sometimes find. So, so let me quickly give you the but, other reason why I believe that reasoning doesn't work with the Sahaba. There's another verse of the Quran hmm. that confirms that the Sahaba were definitely believers. Because some people, some Shias can come around and say, and they can easily conveni conveniently say, okay, hold on. The verse says, Lakad radiallahu anil mu'mineen. The believers. That means those who believed, and we have a specific definition of believers. Okay? We, the Shias, are believers, while the Sunnis are Muslims. We know this. This is the case. Why no, no. Believe me, trust me. There, you have to study your theology a bit no, more. No, but listen, it's been confirmed by the Shias in the park that yes, we believe the Sunnis are Muslims and we are the Mu'mins. I've heard okay. the argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me could quickly finish my argument. Well, you can come. Because yeah. you said Shia, let me speak. The but Quran, let me make my point. The so Quran that you can, only distinguishes yeah. between Muslims and believers yeah. when on mass um, the conversions took That's place. another topic, we can open it. Let's, wait, let me finish my point saying, quickly. Yeah. Before your point comes to yeah. because you seem to say yeah, 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 believers. Yeah, yeah. Um, because... I'm leading I, to a point, you, you, you're going you're gonna to miss you, the I'll point. I'll let you, I'll let you. Yeah. But as the newly converted people hmm. were conquered in territories, yeah. when they began to say the Kalma, yeah. they referred to themselves as believers. But God says, not yet, Muslims first, Faith will enter your hearts after. Just so yeah, that's what what believe it. Okay, believe it I know the verse. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the Arab, the, the Bedouins. Wait, wait. The Bedouins say that we are believers. Now, yeah. come in, let me come back to my point. I know I am aware of that. Okay. Now, why the Sahaba, Tabi'een and Taba Tabi'een are believers according to the Quran? I will give you a very specific verse. 
to this effect. But they believe in Allah, so they believe. No, 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 no. Believers mean mu'mineen. Well, yeah. Mu'mineen. That means they cannot be kuffar, like the Shias claim. Plus, why they would a believer be kuffar? Uh, uh, yeah, sense. thank you. We agree. But the Shias, the overwhelming majority of the Shias, they believe that the Sahaba, the overwhelming majority of them apostatized, just like you argued earlier, the shaitan having being having been in, in, in a form of worship to Allah, yeah. he became a kafir. Likewise, the Sahaba became kuffar after having believed, right? We don't believe that. Why? I'll tell you why. Okay. I have not said that. No, you haven't said that. Yeah. You haven't said that. There are Shias who say this and they are the majority, unfortunately. Maybe you, would, you differ with them on this. Okay. We'll talk about that. Let me finish my point. No, no. Wait. You're going to take me around the world. We're going to go on for one hour and then you're going to come and you're going to agree with me and you're going to say, you know, you're, you're right. You're actually right. I'm going to play YouTube videos right now and then you're going to say, no, they're not Shias. Does that, does that, does that represent you right now? No, no. Okay. The non-Muslims, when they say all the Muslims are terrorists, that's what you're doing here. Oh, no. Continue, continue.